Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm Craig and I'm a software developer in the UK and in this video, we're going to learn about a crucial concept in CSS called inheritance. Now, inheritance is essentially the behavior through which some elements can inherit properties that are applied to an ancestor element and not directly to themselves. To show you exactly what I mean, we're gonna go through a quick example of this behavior over here in CodePen. The link to this pen is below in the description and we've got the files for the starting pen, which is the one that I've got open now and we also have one which is the end code if you just want to watch rather than code along. So we have a simple container div containing an h1 and a few paragraphs. If I select that div using its container class I can apply a font family of Helvetica and you see that when I save that the h1 and the three paragraphs all take on that style, that font family. Despite the fact that we haven't directly targeted any of those elements, they have all inherited properties from the container. The H1 is a child element of the container and has inherited the font, and the paragraphs are descendants of the container rather than just children, and they are direct children of this section element, which itself is a child of the container. And the paragraphs as descendants have also inherited the font. So this is inheritance in a nutshell. Elements can inherit styles applied to a parent or ancestor element. In this video, we'll explore this concept further in more depth and discuss exactly why this is happening. Before we get started with that, I'll just say that we're on all the main social media platforms. So if you wanna join us on Twitter, Instagram, or Facebook, then we'd be happy to see you there. And the links for everything are always below in the descriptions of the videos. If you're finding the content useful, then smash the like button and subscribe. We're posting as often as we can. So remember to click that bell and get notified when those videos drop. The more engagement the channel gets, then the more that YouTube will put the videos in front of people that can truly benefit from them and we can all learn to code together like one big happy family. Okay, so again, inheritance is the process through which some styles are applied not only to a specified element, like we saw when we specified the container div, but also to the specified element's descendants. So if a font is applied to a div element, for example, like we just saw, then that font is applied to all of the text inside the div, even the text enclosed within the child elements of that div. If we couldn't do this, and property values could not be inherited by descendant elements in CSS, we'd have to laboriously select each of the child elements directly and apply the font to those too. We can visualize exactly how inheritance works by looking at this tree diagram of a document. Here we have an H1, a paragraph, and a list, a very simple collection of elements. When a given style declaration is applied to the UL element, let's say this time it's something like the color of red, then the UL obviously takes on that style declaration itself first. The value is then propagated down to the descendants of the UL element. In this case, that is only these three LI elements. If there were more elements, it will continue on down the tree until there are no more descendants to inherit the value. So if there were nested elements inside these LI elements, then they and any children of their own would also inherit from the styles applied up here to the UL. So values can be propagated down but values are never propagated up. So an element never passes any values back up to its ancestors. Any styles applied to one of the li elements, for example, is not going to travel up and affect the body element. Inheritance is one of those things about CSS that is so basic and has behavior that's so easily controlled that once you start using CSS regularly, you can just stop thinking about it really. It becomes intuitive. However, there are still a couple of things that can trip you up and that you should keep in mind. First, we should be aware that not all properties will be passed down to be inherited. A perfect example is borders. These are not inherited by descendants of elements that a border is applied to. So going back to our example if I go to our selector for the container div and give that a border of five pixels solid and blue it is only applied to that container element when we save and not to the descendants of the container despite the fact that the text color is quite clearly still being passed down if I did want to give the border to all children of the container then we would say the dot container and then the angled bracket, which is the combinator for direct children, and then we would use the star, and then all direct children have it. For all descendants, we could say dot container and then the star. 
or we could just use a straightforward universal selector to pass a property that doesn't propagate down a tree. As what we're doing here is just putting a border on all elements, I'll also give some padding as well so we can see that better. So I will say a padding of 10 pixels. If this kind of behavior with borders was the default with CSS, then it would be a lot harder to work with than it currently is. If borders were inherited, documents would become much more cluttered because we'd have to go through and turn off the borders on each of the elements where we don't want them applied. As well as borders, most of the box model properties, so margin, padding, and backgrounds are not inherited for the same reason. Imagine adding, say, a margin top to a container to create some space and then every descendant of that container also had it applied to them. So I'll copy that padding that I just added to the universal selector and I'll give it to the container, but this time we'll say it's 100 pixels. We see only that the container has the padding applied and it has not propagated down through the document to the container's descendants. Also, one thing that we should note is that values that have been inherited have an absence of specificity, not even a specificity of zero. Here I have the specificity calculator open, so we see that a P element has a specificity score of 001, or that would be 0001 if you were to include inline styles, which of course are the most specific and can only be overridden by the importance declaration. A class of sum dash class has a specificity of 0, 1, 0, and an ID of sum dash ID has a specificity of 1, 0, 0. If we check for the universal selector, we see that it has no specificity, so a specificity score of 0, 0, 0. But we can still use this selector that has a specificity of 0 to override inherited styles, which, as I said, have an absence of specificity. So if we say star, uh, inside we'll say the color of dark orange, the elements which inherited their styles have them overridden. This illustrates one of the potential problems of using the universal selector. I recommend avoiding the use of it completely because of this reason of it being able to override styles which you might actually want to pass down. So because it can match any element, the universal selector often has the effect of short-circuiting inheritance. This can be worked around, but it's usually more sensible to avoid the problem in the first place by not using the universal selector. To override these styles with styles that I did intend to pass down through inheritance, I'd now have to specifically give the color blue to the intended elements with h1, comma p, then the brackets, and color blue. Or better still, we could just remove that and the universal selector and allow the elements to inherit the intended styles. There's also the curious problem we have that not all elements will accept some of the properties passed down by an ancestor. Take certain user interface elements, for example, like form input fields. By default, these will have styles set by the browser. Some properties applied by the browser will have a specificity that will override inheritance. So let's have a look at this and create a simple form inside our container div with the Emmet shortcut of form, angled bracket, h1, plus input, plus button. Then when we hit tab, this will give us a form that has a heading, a text input field, and a button. I'll give the H1 the text of form, and I'll give the input a placeholder of type here. And I'll put the text on our button of submit. We see straight away that the text on the button in the input field when we type and the placeholder text have not inherited the blue color from its ancestor, which is of course this container div. So let's select the form and we'll say color blue. And we'll also give the form a border of three pixels solid blue. So we can see which bit the form actually is, plus a little bit of padding of say 15 pixels for a little bit of space. 
Still we see the input and button are not inheriting the blue color from the container and they still retain this black color. If we inspect the input, we see that the color is actually coming from the user agent style sheet, which represents the default styles applied by the browser. It is from an input element selector and we know that this has a specificity score of 001 because it's an element which is more specific than the inherited styles as we know. They're being applied but are being overridden. So we'll have to override this with our own input, comma, button, then our brackets, and we'll have the color blue. And lastly, our placeholder is still gray, so we're going to need to use the placeholder pseudo class selector as it is also not inheriting. Okay, so we've seen that in most cases, styles applied to elements will propagate down to child and descendant elements, but will not propagate up to parent or ancestor elements. We've seen that inherited styles have no specificity of their own and can be easily controlled and overridden. We've also seen that not all style properties will propagate down, particularly those that are associated with the box model in CSS, which we're going to discuss in an upcoming video. So margins, paddings, borders and things like that will not propagate down and be inherited by descendant elements. Finally, we saw that UI elements like form input fields and buttons and things that are generally interactive on the page also do not inherit styles due to the default browser styles having a higher specificity. Inheritance is one of those things about CSS that is so basic and easy to grasp and has behavior that's so simple to control that you never really need to think about it. It becomes intuitive over time when you use CSS more and more. Okay, cool, so that's that. Thanks for watching, I do appreciate you guys. If you found this video useful, then please remember to like, subscribe, share, and all of that good stuff, as it helps us with YouTube's algorithm and makes the channel much more discoverable for people that could genuinely benefit from the content. Also, reach out to us on social media or in the comments below if you have any questions or feedback, or even if you just want to say hi. Links to all of the resources used in this video are in the description below, as always, and if there's any other resources that you know of then please do add them in the comments and I will add them to the description if they're relevant to the content of the video. So join me in the very next video which will be on specificity in depth. We discussed it a little bit in this video and if you want to dive more into specificity, what it is, how it works and how we calculate it, click the link on screen now and we'll break the whole thing apart. So see you there and thanks for watching.